Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel-Smith. So today I thought we'd have a little bit of fairy fun and we're going to make some fairy furniture using what I've described as the fairy leaf cane. So all of these are made completely from polymer clay and I will take you step by step through the whole process of what we need to do to create this little bit of furniture. Now obviously I've used quite a nice bright leaf cane here with some little petal detail but you could use whatever you have to hand to decorate these. Scale wise, this is probably about 12th scale. Depending on what your fairy house is, you can make them bigger or smaller, depending on what size you need. With this video, all the information you need regarding the clay, the equipment and everything else like that, including all the links to any other videos which may be of use, are all in the details listed below this video. So that means we can start straight away and we'll start by making some little armature so we can make the little fairy furniture. Let's start by making the armature for our chairs. Now, this is actually very easy. Um, if you can measure and you can bend wire at 90 degrees, you can do the armature. I'm going to measure out a piece of wire and this is 0.8. And this is 0.8 millimeter and I'll put the gauge in all the details below along with everything else. And I'm going to measure it out six and a half inches and then just cut where that is. And if you're doing it in centimetres, then I suggest you do 16 and a half centimetres. So a single piece of wire. And then either using a measuring sheet or a ruler, I'm going to measure one inch or two and a half centimetres. Put the pliers at that place and then just bend down 90 degrees. Put it back on your measuring sheet or next to the ruler. Go one and a half inches or four centimetres. And again, bend down, so we've got that shape. Next thing we're going to do, putting it back, is to measure down one inch this way. Again, pliers on. And this piece is going to be bent all the way around and up, going face up like that. And I'm just going to press that piece in, to get that nice and tight in together. And there we go. And that is the first piece for our chair. We want two of those for each chair. And that's as complex as this bit gets. Once both your pieces are done, we're going to need a small bit of tape. Now I'm using the duct tape or gaffer tape. You could also use masking tape or the clear sticky tape. And I was going to cut a piece that's probably about just under half an inch or about one centimetre in width. And we only want a very small piece something about like that and then also want a tiny little piece I'm doing something in a, in a moment so I'll just chop that piece off now as well put your two pieces next to each other and then in the middle across these bars we're going to put our wider piece of tape and just wrap it round to attach those two pieces in and then all we do is fold Out that way, out that way. Out that way and out that way. And I'd actually got mine twisted underneath, which is why it took me a little bit longer than normal. And then spend a little bit of time just putting the legs out in such a way that your chair stands up. And have a look at the height, because you want the all four legs to be touching the ground. Now this one is actually slightly longer than that one so what I will do is I will just take off a fraction so at this stage you can adjust them if you need to. Okay so when you've got all four legs standing down now the backs all I do is I fold it over towards the middle and then fold the top bit away in that direction. Repeat for the other one so fold it towards the middle and turn the top away and that just gives a little bit of a decorative detail on the back side of the chair. It wants to fold, if it can, just very slightly away and in, just to give it sort of more of a, a backrest sort of shape. And then where it crosses over, we'll take the little piece of tape
and just wrap that round any way you want just to sort of keep a little bit of togetherness for that piece and that is the base of the chair done and you repeat that for as many times as many chairs as you want so I'm going to make four so I will repeat that four times and then the next thing we're going to do is to cover this armature with a little bit of clay to cover the armatures I'm using just plain brown so the chocolate brown Fimo and I've got about one ounce or 28 grams of that which I've conditioned and put through my pasta machine if you're unsure about conditioning clay why or how we do it I do have a video with a link with a few tips and techniques and I'll put a link to that in the details below this one so I've just put this through on setting number three which is how I normally condition my polymer clay I'm just going to take a little piece of it off now this is enough probably to do about six chairs and this little piece I'm going to put through that way on a thinner setting, so setting number six. And again, all of the details of the settings, I'll put the thicknesses and what they equate to again in the details below this. On my pasta machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. So number six is a relatively thin setting. And we're going to give ourselves a head start by just cutting out some shapes for the seat of the chair and the back of the chair. And again, if you're doing more than one chair, do as many chairs as you want at this stage. So you want two squares for the uh, main part of the chair, but they actually want to be just less than an inch. So probably just around or just over two centimetres. Doesn't matter if one's slightly different to the other, but something along those lines. Okay, and two of those for each chair. And then for the back piece, it's just a tiny, tiny little piece. Again, less than half an inch, so about just under one centimeter. Something along those lines. Okay, so that's the back, that's the seat and the back of the chair. Let's put those to one side. Now to cover around the armature of the legs and around the back, there are three main ways that I sort of think are the best three to use. Any one of the three works well, so just decide which one you want to do. And it's, you normally find that one of them suits the way you want to do things. Now the first one to do is to actually cut thin sheets. And you would cut the same height as we have for each leg. So each leg is one inch. So to do four legs, I'd do half an inch. And then all you do is you pick that up and you just wrap that round, curl it round the leg of your chair. Now you don't have to be neat when we're doing this. In fact, the less neat you are, the better, because obviously that looks slightly more twig-like and you want it right to the bottom and then curled slightly up and over around this top bit. And that's all you have to do. So that's one way of doing it. And for doing the back, because we've got two inches worth of wire or five centimetres, and of course this was two and a half centimetres, then for doing the back, I would simply cut two pieces that are two inches long. So you'd need four pieces to do the legs and two pieces to do the back. So that's one way of doing it. And that's quite a nice, easy way of doing it. Another way you can do it is to roll the clay into a log or a sausage and it's quite good practice at getting used to rolling the clay out and you can go quite thin to get the legs so I'd go probably about an eighth, just over an eighth of an inch, so probably, I don't know, probably just under half a centimetre. And of course it doesn't need to be even and it doesn't need to be neat because each leg can be different. So I've already done one leg, so I only need three pieces and I've just cut off the one each inch pieces. So the first way you do it is to cut halfway down, open it out slightly, slip the leg in, 
fold the clay around the outside and this way of doing it means that you are more likely to have the wire right in the middle of your piece of clay and this is the way I prefer to do it but it can be a bit tricky when you're starting and this way can be slightly easier. You can also completely cut through so you put one half behind, press in, put the other half on top and press in and again that works quite well getting the wire in the middle. You it's, it's slightly trickier because occasionally you don't meld the two halves together um, but again it's quite an easy technique just to press it around and the last way was simply to get your piece and just literally press it in, press the wire in and then pull the clay up and over and round the other side. So it's actually four ways of doing it, not three. Um, but any of those ways work and as you can see I'm not going neat, all I've made sure is that there's no wire showing. I will also at this stage put it down to check that all four of my legs are hitting the ground. Now this one is slightly shorter so what you can do at this stage is you can actually just pull the clay slightly longer and just have a little bit of a mess around and make sure that all four pieces are sitting nicely on the ground and then you can go on and this time we want to same size but this time two inches or five centimeters long to go around the two back pieces. Same thing, doesn't need to be neat, doesn't need to be even and these ones I do tend just to press in because I find it easier because we're going around that slightly weird shape. So press in and pull around and because you're going completely around the wire and the clay is touching itself again around the wire we don't need any glue or anything like that it will just simply stick on around the wire by itself just gently and slowly take your time there's no rush fit the clay around if you've got too much just pop that off it's always handy to have a little bit extra and just gently gently pull around and all we're looking to do is to make sure we've got no wire showing at any point. Where it joins up with these side legs. I'll just roll it slightly. Just so it looks like it's one continuous piece. And then repeat with the other side. The other thing I find is that every chair comes out slightly different. And I think that's how it should be. Because these are fairy chairs handmade from twigs, everyone would be different. Don't worry about covering over this piece of tape, that's what those little pieces of um, squares are that we cut a moment ago. They'll fill in any gaps we've got. Smaller your fingers, the easier this bit is to do. Okay, so again just taking off that little bit of excess. And just taking a bit of time, looking to see where the wire is. Getting it in the middle, I can use my needle just to sort of open that out a bit, push in. Again, just roll those two together, makes it look as though it's joined up. Anyway, you've got little bits of gaps too much, just take a little bit of extra and add it on. And gradually, it'll build up so we've got the covered armature of our chair. This stage I'm just going to put the little squares, one on the front, one on the back, just to add some extra clay into that area where we joined it and to make sure it's covering over completely all of the tape and also a little bit of extra clay can help cover up any areas where the uh, wire might be showing through. We are also going to be adding some moss onto the back of these chairs so don't worry too much about the back looking messy on this area where it joins but we do want this bit and of course we've got the leaf going completely over the front so you don't need to worry about the front of the chair but when it's more or less done and you've got no wire showing through then we will simply use the squares to go on the seat of the chair one goes on the top turn it over one goes on the bottom, press the two layers together and then again just press them up 
towards the legs and the twiggy area. Again, the last thing we're looking for is making sure there's no clay, no wire showing. So anywhere like here where you've got little bits of wire, just add an extra little bit of the clay in. Give it a roll over so it all joins in. As always, check again that it sits all four legs on the ground, which it does and give a final quick look to make sure there's no wire showing through. Next thing to do is to add some texture to our armature so it looks more twig-like. And the first thing I'm going to do is just press all over with this little foam pad. These sort of things you can use is this like packing foam and it just gives a nice texture. All I'm going to do is start with each leg and just wrap each leg. So I don't know whether you can see there, I've got a nice sort of bit of texture on it. Do the same with each leg. takes away any fingerprints and any marks you might have made that you don't want. It just gives it a nice sort of overall starting texture. And then I'll do the bits up the back because these will be showing. And this top bit around the back as well. So I'm not so worried about this bit because this will have moss on. Underneath of the seat will have moss on and obviously all of the inside of the chair will have the leaves on so that won't be showing. And when I've done all the pieces, then the next thing I do is just with a cocktail stick, I'm just going to score some lines. Just make it more twig-like. And I'm going to go around every leg and up around the back as well. And that just really sort of like gives a nice sort of finish around the surface. So I'll do that all four legs and around the back. Okay, and of course the great thing about not having any texture on the seat is that you can hold onto the seat whilst you're doing all the rest and make sure you don't get any more fingerprints on. So once you've got all that done and the texture is done, last thing to do is as always just make sure that it's still sitting nicely, that you've still got all four legs sat down and then we're just going to bake it. Obviously if you're doing more than one bake them all together. If I'm baking four I will normally do it so that the tall parts all face together and then I'll get a piece of aluminium foil, tent it over the whole thing so it's proud and way above the height of the middle of the chairs and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. The other thing is if you are having problems, whilst I remember, if you're having problems at any point sort of seeing the little um, bits of metal showing through and you just can't seem to cover them over, don't worry, because we are covering this with little bits of greenery and we've also got petals we can put on at the very end. So if there's any stubborn bits of wire still showing through, we can always cover those over. Right, so I'll get that baked and I'll come back to do the next bit when that is finished baking. Once the chair is baked and cooled, we can start to add the moss and the little extra decoration bits on it. I've got the equivalent of half an ounce of polymer clay here, three parts apple green, one part tropical green, and a little bit of the, um, the brown, just to sort of mess it up slightly. Now, whilst I'm using colours directly out of the packs here, particularly because obviously if you're starting and it's the first project you're doing, it'll be fresh packs you're using. If you're someone who works with clay a lot, just find yourself some leftover bits of green and the same with the brown. I wouldn't, if it was me doing it myself, I would go to my scrap box and find some sort of mid-shade brown and the same with greens, find a slightly sort of dirtyish shade of green. But for those starting fresh, this is how I mixed up and this is the colour you get having mixed that up. So I've conditioned that as per normal and put it through setting number three of my pasta machine. We're going to make moss to go under the seat and moss to go behind here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just gutter myself a piece again to fit and this time I'm going slightly bigger than I did last time so for the underneath of the seat I'm going a full one inch square or two and a half centimeters and then for the back a quarter inch sorry a half inch square or just under or about one centimeter just over one centimeter Again, the amount of clay we've got here is enough to do about six seats and I'm going to take a little bit of the clay and we're going to use that to add the extra de decoration in a moment. First thing I'm going to do 
a little bit of liquid clay. Now this is liquid polymer clay. I've just decanted some into a pot for ease of use. And I'm just going to dab a bit on the underneath and on the back here. So it helps when you've got baked clay and unbaked clay. It just helps when you're positioning in it and gives it a nice strong bond. You don't have to use it. You can do it without, but it just helps to press the clay in it means you can move it around a bit more um, if you don't have any of this for what we're doing today a little bit of PVA glue would actually work just as well so I'm going to smear that on there and smear that just on the back there and then I'm just going to round off the corners of the piece for the back and then just sort of put it in and press it round and it's quite nice just to roll it up, you can sort of smear it up slightly, change the shape, just press it in, make it slightly more organic looking, so it's not quite such a, a square piece, you can have it sort of extending down some of the, the branch bits, so just a bit like that. And with this one, that fits on the underneath, sometimes easier to sort of half fold it when you go in, and then you can just bring it up, Put it up around the sides. And again, press it in. It doesn't matter if it gets bobbly because that makes it even more moss-like. Again, you can spread it up the legs slightly. And just do whatever looks good for you. We'll bring it around the slight front of a bit if you want as well. And when we've got those pieces on, we're just going to texture them. And the first texture I'm going to use is that foam sheet again. Just give a nice sort of mottled texture and I'll do it on the underneath. And any texture sheets you've got um, would work well for this. Um, some very coarse sandpaper of course gives a nice gritty finish and there's several sort of things you can find. Have a look online, see what you can find. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just taking a small piece of foil and I'm just going to scrunch it up. And then that gives a nice texture too. Just presses down, gives little indents. Now we are going to add some paint to this after it's finished baking, just to sort of make it more moss-like and give a few details to texture. If you were using leftover bits of scrap clay, you could also use lots of little tiny bits of different colors and that would give it a lovely um, finish. There are lots of different shades of green rather than just the one shade of green. But that just gives a nice sort of texture and I say we'll add bits onto that. If you don't have any acrylic paint then you could also add um, mica powders or scrapes and little bits off um, chalk pastels and with a brush put on bits of coloration before you bake it. But with the acrylic paints obviously you can do that after we bake. And because I'm going to be adding colour to all the extra bits and the legs and the back and everything else then I like to do it with acrylic paint once we have baked. So you could just leave it like that and bake again, but I like to add a little bit of extra detail. So I'm going to take some of the clay, press it nice and firmly together, make sure there's no air bubbles, and I am going to roll really thin little strips of this. Now as I say, you don't have to do this, it depends how much detail you want to add to your piece. It does take a bit of time to do this. Um, so it's completely up to you whether you do it or not. But as you can see there, I've rolled out really quite thin pieces. It's also just very good practice to be able to do this with polymer clay, because we do it in so many different techniques that we do that having this ability to roll things out does help quite a lot. If your piece breaks, do a piece that breaks, you can simply put one piece on top of the other and just roll the join back until you roll it thin again, okay? And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that to a piece of the green so it's putting the unbaked next to the unbaked and then just twirl it around the chair legs look like a piece of a, a tendril and it doesn't have to be tight and at the very end I'll take a little paintbrush and where that's going to attach or touch the chair leg just wrap it around till it touches. So that's actually wrapped fairly tight. I quite often do them a lot looser. If I show you one of the ones I've already done, ready to go get going with this, you can see here where I've wrapped it all the way around and some of them are really quite loose and this one's actually baked. And once it's baked, these are quite firm and quite sturdy. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna pick the whole chair up by it, but it's enough that it will stay on. And it's nice to add little extra loops up around here to wind it round 
the inside to have little bits left over. So just do as many or as few as you want and just take your time. So I will fast forward as I go through this one to show you the pieces I'm doing for this. But that is all we do. Roll this very thin and just wrap it round and just add the extra bits where it finishes on with a little bit of liquid clay. Okay, so there we go. There's our chair all wrapped up. So I'm trying to touch it as little as possible, obviously, because it's all ready to go. And as before, I will put that on a tile to bake. Tent the whole piece in aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay I am using. And once that's baked, we've just got the paint to add around the outside and then we can put the leaves on. So the last thing we're going to do before we add all the um, leaves and the flowers is to messy these up a bit to make them sort of slightly more realistic than having all these plain colours. So I've got some acrylic paints. These are Castle Art Supplies. Um, there are quite a few acrylic paints that work well with polymer clay. If in doubt, the place to look is always the Blue Bottle Tree, um, the website. And again, I'll put a link to that in the details below. There are loads of articles and details there as to which paints are good to use with polymer clay. So I've gone for a lighter brown, as I've used dark brown, a dark green, and then a little bit of the lighter green sort of matching with these just to add on the end. Now I have got a very old rough brush. Um, these are ones that I use when I do my old paintings and I quite often sort of do lots of tapping work. So after a while they get very distorted like that, but they are great for adding bits and pieces of paint to things like this. So if you've got an old scruffy brush, use that. And we're going to do just a dry technique where I'm just dabbing it on and we are not painting so much as just dabbing and I'm just adding bits of the paint over the legs and then over the moss you can add a bit onto the bits going round the legs of the chairs again going up the backs going around the moss at the back and right up the top. Now I'm not worried about the front of the chairs or the main seat of the chair because obviously that's going to be covered over. But just tapping on anywhere and everywhere you think needs a bit. And then I will use biodegradable wet wipes or obviously you could use just a wet cloth instead. And then you can take a bit off if it's on some of the areas you don't want. And I've got all four of my chairs here so I'll do one colour at a time on all four. So having done the burnt sienna, I'm moving on to the hooker's green. Exactly the same, I'm not even bothering to clean my brush because all we're doing, we're not painting so much as dabbing. So again with the dark, exactly the same. Just dab it on and then wipe away anything you don't want and do that. Again, I'll do that for all four of the chairs. Up the back, over the moss. Just messing it all up a bit. And then finally, with the light green, just a few little touches on the chair legs. I say if this put too much on, just take it off. But we've got the light green in the leaf and it really just does help tie the whole piece together. So 
So I'll get the other ones finished and I'll bring you back when we are done. Let's move on to the leaf cane we're going to do for today's tutorial. So I'm calling this one the fairy leaf cane simply because we're using it to decorate the fairy furniture. I have done quite a few leaf cane tutorials and any of them would look good as would any leaf cane you've already got. But I'm doing this one today as an extra special one just because I think it looks quite nice on the fairy furniture that we are doing. As before I'm using Fimo Soft but all well known and recognised brands of polymer clay will work equally well with this leaf cane technique. The amounts I'm using, I've got one ounce and I've gone for this chocolate brown again so that it matches in with the chairs. So one ounce or about 28 grams of that. We're going to do a Skinner blend with these four colours. So I've got the lemon yellow, the turquoise or peppermint, brilliant blue and then this is the pistachio. And these amounts, they're half an ounce or 14 grams. And then we're going to do a little Skinner blend to go around the outside and to do the veins and that's going to be white lemon yellow and gold and these are quarter ounce or seven grams and then we've got the same amount quarter ounce seven grams of the brilliant blue which will just add a little bit of a highlight around the outside so the first thing i'm going to do is get all of those conditioned in their separate colors and as i mentioned before i condition things on setting number three and for those of you who are unsure about conditioning clay i do have that video which has got the link down below um, and we're going to do a skinner blend so if you're unsure about skinner blends i also have a tutorial which gives you a few tips and techniques on how to do a good skinner blend and i'll put a link to that down below as well so I'm going to get all of those conditioned on setting number three of my pasta machine and we'll start by doing a Skinner blend between these four colours. Okay, so I'm going to do a simple four-way Skinner blend from the yellow to the peppermint to the blue to the pistachio. So the end two we cut down on the diagonal, the middle two cut down straight and then just simply double them up on each other. And you'll notice I've put this one so that the large parts at this side and the large parts here, because that means when I put them together, it makes it nice and easy for me. So the long strips sit going across. And then that one sits on that end. I'll give them a slight roll. So we've got them nicely adhered. And then I will fold them in half so that it makes it easier and they don't ping apart when it goes through the pasta machine. And because I've now got four layers thickness of clay, I will put a thicker setting of the pasta machine on. So I'll use setting number two of my machine and I'll put it through folding top to bottom, top to bottom until we get a nice blend from one colour through to the next. So once we're done, we've got our nice blend through from one side to the other. I'm just going to fold that in half put it back through the same setting on my pasta machine, dark end first, make sure there's no air trapped, dark end first to get a longer thinner strip and then I'm going to put it down through my thinnest usable setting on my pasta machine so for me that is setting number nine to get as long and thin a strip as I can. If you know your pasta machine is one that shreds your clay then go down to your thinnest usable setting instead. And all I'm going to do is concertina this, probably about an inch to and a half centimetres wide, backwards and forwards, making sure there's no air trapped in the folds as I go. So I've just pressed it in to make sure I've got a nice neat oblong, and then what I'm going to do with something like the cable needle, right down the middle of the cane, I'm going to press down. And I want this to go almost all the way down to the bottom. You can see that? Both sides. Because now I've moved that yellow clay all the way down. So if I press back over the top, almost creating more of a triangular shape, we will get that lovely push of color down. So I want this to be back to more of an oblong, so where I've got the triangle I'm just pressing down on these two top corners so that I can press it flatter to make more of an oblong shape again. So can you see there it's going more oblong? 
and we're going to do this until it's about five inches or twelve and a half centimeters long. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing in with my hands as I move along the length which makes it longer and smaller as we go. That's probably about right, might be slightly more. Let's have a look see. One, two, three, four, five. That's not bad. So I'm going to chop off one piece that's about an inch and a half or four centimetres in length. And you can see there where you've got that push down going through. So that's our largest piece. We put that on one side. We want five pieces in decreasing sizes. So I'm going to do the same again. It gets to about five inches, about twelve and a half centimetres, and then cut off one piece that's one and a half inch or four centimetres long. Same again, but this time going just about four and a half inches. And then this last piece, I just need to cut two pieces from. And what I'll do is, having worked a little bit on it, I'll work just on one end so that this end ends up smaller than this end and we're going sort of for about three inches about seven and a half centimeters or eight centimeters rather so you can cut off one piece that's one and a half inches and then the other piece so that should give you your five decreasing sizes so there are our five pieces of our leaf but at the moment if we put the veins in in between the veins would go out straight and we obviously we want the veins to go slightly upwards so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the shape of these ever so slightly so where the yellow is I'm just going to push back and then when the green is I'm going to push back so can you see I'm sort of changing the shape just very slightly so where the yellow is push back and where the green is push back so it's almost like changing the shape a bit like that and then we'll have more of a chance so just the diagonal corners just pressing them in of getting our veins going up which will make sense when we add the veins in a second okay it's just pressing down on the opposite corners and just changing the shape slightly Right, so that is those bits. So the next thing we need to do is to do the Skinner Blend to do the veins. This time the Skinner Blend is going to be the white, the lemon yellow and the gold. And with just three pieces in, exactly the same as before, diagonally through the end ones, straight down the middle. Put them together, give a little roll. fold in half and put back through the pasta machine. Now the one difference we're going to do with this one is we are going to keep as short a piece as we can. In fact this is actually probably going to be slightly narrower than this as we do our blend and in order to do that there are several ways of doing it. The way I normally do is side of the pasta machine I actually push it right up against the side and just hold this side sort of like inwards slightly as you turn the, pas the wheel of the pasta machine. You can also get something like a pack of polymer clay and place that in your pasta machine so effectively block off part of it so that just sits above where the rollers are which only leaves that amount that's a usable space the other thing I do when I want to make things smaller is having put it through once I will then press it inwards to concertina it to make it physically smaller with my hands and we will be doing that later on um, when we do the veins um, this is both for the veins and for the outside going round the leaf, but I'll explain it slightly more when we get to that stage. But for now, we're going to do a blend, but try and keep it as narrow this way as you can. Okay, so there's our blend. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off 
probably just under a third of it because we don't need a huge amount for the veins and the rest of this is going to go on one side for later. Now we need this piece to actually be no wider than about that because it's going to go as a leaf vein around the side of our leaf. So we need to gradually shrink this down like that. The easiest way to do this is to do what I was mentioning a short while ago. So we're literally pressing it in and concertinaing it up with our fingers. Just small little ripples and you don't do it all at once you do this each time you go through the machine. So that's already gone down quite a bit so now I'm going to put it pressed up against one side of the pasta machine making sure that this doesn't spread out as it goes through and I'm going to put it through a slightly thicker setting. So I'm going to go up to setting number one on my pasta machine, fold it in half and do the same again. So always fold first of course and this time I'm going to put it up a setting thicker so for me this is going up to my thickest setting now so setting naught and I'll keep it on setting naught until I get it to the thickness that I require. And that's not far off what we want. So I've just pushed that through the pasta machine. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take our brown clay now I don't want it on a thick setting I only want a very thin outline so I'll take a piece that's wide enough to go round our piece but I don't want it that thick so I'm going to put it down to quite a thin setting probably setting number six on the pasta machine but put it through that way because I know it's already the right width that way but I want it longer that way. I'm going to have the gold to the outer part of the vein and the white towards the middle so I'm just going to press with my fingers along the edge of the gold just to make more of a point don't worry if it's not neat on the edge, it's not going to matter in what we're doing. Put it down towards the bottom edge. Fold the brown over the top, pressing down at the point again. And cut away the excess. So that's more or less the right size we want. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it back through the pasta machine. That way down, because we don't want it spreading out that way. And I'll put it back through on setting number one. Drop off the end so you can see that nice leaf vein coming through. And then finding my first largest leaf, I'm just going to press down. So it's going out, but not quite to the edge, and chop down. Okay, so there's the leaf vein on the first piece. So the second piece, we're going to do it slightly thinner. So I'm going to put it through on setting number two of my pasta machine. And again, put it on not quite at the edge, pull it round. And if you've got any excess, just take that off. And that's going to sit on the piece like that. Third piece, you know what we're going to do. We're going to put it down again, so this time setting number three. Same again. Put it round. Drop it off. And then the last one, I'll keep it the same size. And the other piece would sit on top there. So we can start putting them together. So to start with, we're just going to press them slightly in. So I'm just pressing in the middles, not at top or bottom. And then we're going to turn it on its side, so that's towards the middle, so turn it towards the middle, and all these leaves are going to be pressed up that way. So I'm pressing all the tops of the leaves 
on top of each other and pressing them all down towards the bottom. And what that does is it starts to move the angle of these veins upwards. You can do it on both sides. And the whole part, the whole leaf, the whole process we're doing, this is probably the trickiest bit, is getting these leaf veins to move in that direction. So if it doesn't work first time, don't worry. Um, you're just trying to get them going slightly up. And you often find that in the middle it's moving more than it does on the outer sides. You can see that as I'm doing this, so it's getting wider. that's what we want as well and I'm also pressing down as I go as well as along and we want to get this till it's about say probably about three inches seven and a half centimeters something like that or just under let's see how we're doing so we're not far off so chop down the middle And when you put the two sides together, that will be the start of our leaf cane. So the next thing we need to do is put the middle part of the cane of the leaf vein in. And this will be a simple piece that goes from one side to the other. And I'm going to leave that the right side, so I'll just chop it like that. But of course, we need to pinch the end. And we do need to cover that in a layer of the brown. So I'm going to make sure I've got a piece that's the right width and again put that through on setting number six so I'll put it through that, that way through. So I'm looking for a piece that's going to be twice the length of this which this one is so I can chop along either side and pull that down over the top And then that will fit on the inside of our leaf cane. And I'll chop away the excess at the bottom. Put your remaining brown clay back into a ball. And if you roll it out or make it into a, sh a piece that's roughly the same width or height as your cane, like that, then you know when you put this through the pasta machine it's going to come out into a piece that's the right size to go all the way around the outside. So we only want a very thin layer. So I'll put this through whilst it's still quite chunky. As you see I've made a point here, so I'll put that through the pasta machine on setting number three to start with. And then it's the right, I know it's the right width, so now I can put it through on quite a thin setting. So I want to, we want two layers of this, one to go around now and one to go around the very outside. So I'll put this down onto setting number nine of my pasta machine, so my thinnest setting, so I only get a nice thin layer of brown around the outside. And then not going right at the very bottom, so leaving that bit open, I'm just going to put this all the way around the outside. And then chop off the excess, excess again where it gets down. So I've left that bit open at the bottom. So I haven't quite got enough of the clay left to go all the way around the outside. So I'm going to get myself the same amount again of the gold, the yellow and the white, because I'm thinking I would like quite a nice chunky border about that sort of thickness and there's definitely not enough of this to go around. So again I will get a quarter an ounce of the gold, the lemon yellow and the white and do exactly the same as we did and make a Skinner blend and repeat exactly what we did up to the stage where we got it to this width. Here's the new piece I've just made and that will be enough for what we want but you could also add 
just attach the other bit in if you wanted to. But what I'm looking for is something that's twice the height of our leaf. Because having done that, what we're going to do now is we're going to chop that in half. And I'm going to have the gold towards the top and the white towards the bottom. So I want this to be a piece that's wide enough that will fit all the way around. So having folded that in half, put the two pieces together, what I'm looking for is a piece that's going to fit from here all the way around to here, but also be wide enough to go around. So I'll put it through just the first time to see how I'm going. Again, always fold first. And I can see that, yes, I have got the right height, but not quite the right length at the moment. So I'll put that back together again. And the same way as we concertinaed it thinner, you can, or narrower, you can actually pull it very slightly wider. So again, just a little bit to start with. Always checking that it's still the right bit. And we just need to do it a little bit more. So again, I'm just pulling, I'm mainly pulling from the sides because that bit in the middle was the, the thinnest part and the sides are slightly wider. So I'm just pulling the slides wider still. And that's about what we need. So I can now put that on there, just take off the excess. And I know that I need to pull this ever so slightly that way because it wasn't quite wide enough. That's the great thing about polymer clay, if it splits, you just patch it together again. And hopefully we can put it completely around our piece. So that the white ends meet up and go over that bit we'd left open at the bottom. And just to add a little bit more extra interest, we've got that piece of brilliant blue that we had. I'm just going to roll that up into a log and we're going to put pieces one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just where these leaf veins come out in the leaf, just to add a little bit of extra something around the outside. So I need to roll this so it's nine times the length of this piece. And that just gives us a little bit of added interest. Again, it doesn't have to be completely neat or even. If you find you roll to a bit where it's too narrow, just wrap it on itself and re-roll. And it doesn't matter because it's a leaf cane, it doesn't matter if every slice we take of this cane is different. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. We're about there. So all I'm going to do is wherever I've got the leaf vein with the edge of my cable needle, I'm pressing in. Look at how it is at the bottom. Press in along the side. Take the blue, press it in and then just pinch it off. And repeat that all the way around. Find the remainder of your brown clay and as we did before roll it into a log that's the right height, press it flat and put it through, I'm going to put it through setting number three to start with with that thin piece so it's not putting too much pressure on the pasta machine. See how we're going. Then I'll put it through setting number four and I'll keep going down the settings until I've got a setting that's wide enough to go around the whole piece. So for me that was setting six. I 
I usually start at the bottom of the leaf cane and just gently put the clay around the outside, making sure there's no air bubbles. And then cut off the excess at the end. Now as always, it usually looks a mess at this stage because obviously we've done lots of work on either end. Um, but what we can do now is we can start reducing that down. And what I'm doing by re reducing is I'm pressing in. And if you can see, I'm actually trying to make it more of a diagonal shape because eventually your fingers automatically do that. Point at this end, point at this end. And as is often the case with leaves, these two bits tend to be less elongated than the end bit and I'm looking for a size and a shape once it gets to a certain size you can turn it on its side and start reducing it I'm looking for a size and a shape that's about two inches or five centimeters high and just over um, not quite an inch and a half so not quite four centimeters wide and that fits nicely onto the size of chair that we are doing and obviously if you're doing different size chairs just make your leaf whatever size you like. What I'm going to do at this stage, I'm not quite there yet. I can't wait any longer. I need to cut through and I don't need to reduce all of it because this is more than we need for the um, four chairs and also to make a table. So I'm just going to chop through probably about a third down just to see what we've got. And there is our fairy leaf cane. It's a lovely bright sort of fantasy leaf but it works very well for the little fairy furniture. So I'm going to put the small piece on one side because I can do something else with that later and now that I've got a bit that I can work on and I can see more then I can start to uh, push this down and get this to the size I need. Of course, if you wanted to, the fairy chairs that I've done and the table, I've used two leaves on each fairy chair. But of course, you could just leave a leaf, the pattern leaf, quite big and just do a single leaf. Completely up to you what you want to do. But as I, say, I know from experience, having done a set of these, that I want this to be about that size, that two inches, five centimetres in height. And just under one and a half. Ooh, so we're not far off. So yep, yeah, that's probably not far off what we want. So I'm just going to curve in the sides of the leaf slightly. And that should be about the right shape and size for taking slices off. So we're going to put this on one side now. And we've also got the little blue flowers to do as well. So that allow this one, this cane to rest a bit, which will mean it'll be easier for us taking thin slices off in a few moments. We're going to add some little flowers to our fairy chairs and I've used the blue that I used in the leaf cane so it's just so it marries in and um, makes a nice match in our pieces. And I've used just very small amounts and that's the brilliant blue and the white. And as before I've conditioned them and this time we're going to skin a blend just the two colours because it's just the two colours. Just go diagonally through both, put them together like that. And as before, back through the pasta machine, setting number two, keeping it nice and sort of quite small this time, again, because we don't need to go too big, um, until we've got a nice blend one end to the other. When your blend's done, and I haven't bothered to do it so it's completely blended, because it's nice with the little flowers if they're not quite blended completely, just fold it in half, back through, dark side, same setting to give myself a longer, thinner piece. And then as per normal, straight down through to the thinnest usable setting that you can use on your pasta machine to get as long and thin a strip as you can. And this time we're just going to roll up from the white end to the blue. down in quarters, doesn't matter if they're not even because this is a flower petal we're doing so each slice doesn't have to be the same but if you've seen me before you know exactly what we're doing now, just pull up the sides, 
push in at the bottom to make it thinner. Repeat with a second piece. Put the two together. Repeat with the next two pieces. Push them together. Push all four pieces together. Pull across the top, top to make a triangular shape. Cut in two. Put together and that is our petal. And then as we did, but in smaller form, we are going to push the two fingers together along the outsides to create a square. Do it top and bottom. And because we've got such a small amount, that's all you need to do. And then just pressing in along the lines, turning and rotating, we will continue pressing in until we have got a really small cane to make our flowers with. Once it gets to about three inches, seven and a half centimetres in length, I will normally chop a piece off, put that to one side and continue to work just on the smaller piece. And again, how small you do these is completely up to you. I will generally work on it, say up in the air, I find easier when it gets to this sort of size rather than doing it along a tile, but keeping the square shape. Until it's about it's probably about a quarter of an inch or sort of half a centimetre across and when you've got it to the right size you can then with that being the middle of the petal you can just gently round off down the length and if you want to just press in along the white bit just to make it slightly more pointed you can also if you want to just roll across the bottom so you've got round leaves and if I just take a little slice off so we can see what we've got you can see there we've got little flower petals so they will add a little bit of interest and cover over any joins or as I mentioned before if you've got any of the metal bits showing through in the legs of your chairs these are what can help cover up any of those bits you don't like or don't want to have showing in the final piece. Our chairs are ready to have the leaves added so what we're going to do now is to take some slices from this cane. There are various machines on the market for taking slices of thin polymer clay from canes. If you've got one of those, absolutely use it for this project. It'll be fantastic. For those of you who haven't, what we're going to try and do is to take as thin a slice as we can. And because we've got almost like a flat side, if you put that flat side down and then I'm going to sort of cut down in that direction in one fell smooth move. Cut them as thin as you can but not so thin that they're actually going to sort of, um, you're going to cut wrong slices. And to be honest, there's nothing, no getting away from this. It is practice, 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 which means that you cut nice thin slices, which is why I said if you've got one of the slicing machines, definitely use one of those because this is quite a big cane to take thin slices from. I tend to look over the top when I'm doing mine. So I'm just standing up now over the top of the camera. So this may or may not go okay. But that's what we're looking for, fairly thin, and that's obviously the end bit. So that's thin in places and not in others. But having got a nice neat edge, I should now be able to take some relatively thin slices. And you want two slices for each chair. So that was the uneven one from the end, so I'll put that off to one side. I will find my chair and the first thing I'm going to do is just see whether they are roughly the right size and I want the one at the back to go up and over the top and the one in the middle goes down and falls over the front so they are roughly the right size. So the last sort of bit I want to do to these is to add some texture. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll just on the very edge because I want a thin edge and obviously where we've cut down it's not quite as thin. Do the same on each one. That one was already quite thin there. 
this one not so much so I'll thin him out you could of course also do it with your fingers and I'm going to use some texture sheets now these are ones that I've made myself out of the two-part um, molding compound there is a very good paid for tutorial um, from Helen Briel which gives you details of how to make all sorts of texture sheets and I'll put a link to that in the details below this one because I learned a lot from her I'm not going to say any more as to how I did this one you can probably figure it out for yourself um, if you've done texture sheets yourselves and of course you can buy leaf feigning textures um, instead but all I do with this is I put that down there put this one over the top and press down And that just gives a nice amount of texture whilst not being too much. Do that for each piece and once I've got my pieces I'm going to put that on there, have a quick look as to where that goes up at the sides and then just cut out a little V because what I don't want is I don't want a huge overlap at the back of the chairs. Put this one in place so it's at the top so it'll fit nicely over the back and then with those two still together what I'm looking to see if I can is that this lines up which actually it does there so I can cut away from the top piece turn it over put those two pieces together and then just very gently with the cable needle just pull those pieces down and sort of smooth over where the joins are and now that I've got my piece ready to go on I can take a little bit of liquid clay and again you could do this with PVA glue or you could just do it with nothing but you'll get a better um, fit if you put a little bit of something on put that on and then position the leaf on the chair so it sits back in this bit sort of folds down and then you can play around just pressing it gently into the back to make sure it's sat on play around with the sides making it slightly more leafy curve bits in curve them outwards have it coming forwards have a bit of a twist on the bottom just add whatever you want to make your chair look good and then if we find our little petal cane, I'm going to take five thin slices. And then just put those just where that join is, fanning out to make a flower. A little bit of um, lemon yellow clay so I'm just going to condition that in my fingers and then take off a teeny tiny amount roll that into a ball and then that just pops in the middle to make a little flower and then we're going to do exactly the same on the back here but this piece because it's baked clay and we're just going to help the pieces to sit we're just going to add a little bit of liquid clay just on there so that gives us decorative element to the back and the front of our chair and then as I mentioned if there's any areas you don't like the look of or just to add a little bit of extra interest I'm going to take seven more thin slices of the little flower cane and I'm just going to curl up the bottoms these are just going to be odd little petals just sitting anywhere we want just to add a little bit of extra something to the chairs and as I say you can place them wherever you've got an area that you don't like or you think needs a little extra something and then have a look round.
So everywhere I want to put one, I'm going to put a tiny little dot of liquid clay and then just sit that in, press it in place with the cable needle and say just add them anywhere I think might look nice around my chair. Okay, one final look, making sure I haven't sort of taken anything off or pushed anything out of place. I'll complete that process for all the other chairs and when I've got all four ready, as before, on a tile, completely encased in aluminium foil but not so that it's touching the tops and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay I am using. Having made the chairs, the table's a doddle, so I'm going to whiz through lots of the bits of this but just um, concentrate on the bits that are different. Depending on how many chairs you made, you might have enough green clay left. That's all I've got left, which isn't enough, so I'll just mix myself up another batch, same proportions as we did before. Same with the brown, I've got that amount left. That probably would just about be enough, but just to be on the safe side, I am going to do myself and condition myself some more brown. So those are the two colours we need to start with, because of course all the rest, the leaves and the little flowers, we have already made. We're going to work on a tile, so I've got my tile ready there, and we put the table base on there and build on that, and then bake it in situ, so I've got that already. The wire frames we've got for this, very simple. So this was five inches of um, wire and it's bent at the one and a half inch or four centimetres. Along the top you've got two inches and then down again for the one and a half. So inches, one and a half, two inches, one and a half centimetres, four centimetres, five centimetres, four centimetres. Okay, and we do that twice. So nice and simple. Having got the brown clay conditioned, I've put it through on setting number three of my pasta machine and I've cut out a piece that is two inches, five centimetres by three inches, seven and a half centimetres. And then we've got four pieces to go around the legs of our table and these are um, one and a half or four centimetre pieces. And you can see they're slightly thicker than we did for the chair legs. So as before, first thing is just push these around the legs and again, you can use any of the methods we used earlier for quickness. I'm just pushing them around. And as before, it doesn't need to be neat. In fact, the more untidy it looks, the better, because they look more like twigs. I've covered all the legs. I've textured them exactly the same as we did before, firstly with the foam pad and then using a cocktail stick. And I've checked that when they stand up, they are sitting fairly straight. And then all we're going to do is we're going to turn them upside down and just press them slightly into the clay at either end of the table. We're going to take a thickish roll of clay, so it's probably about a quarter of an inch or just sort of under a three quarters of a centimetre, something like that in size. Cut a bit to fit in between the legs. Do the same for the other end. And then with the cable needle, just press that clay down and around and down into the table so it supports the wire. And again, go over the other edge and do that for both sides. I've put the green clay on a thin setting, so setting number six, and I have cut a piece just wider than the two by three inches, the seven and a half by five centimeters size. And that's going to lift off and fit down and that should be enough to go over the edges of the extra little bits we've added and down the side of the table. Sort of curl it round the legs in the corner where it's sort of like a bit of extra added moss. Put it in wherever it looks good and then I'm going to also press out just to, to 
change the shape of the table slightly so it's not quite so even. I'm just pressing out to where the moss is going to be on the top. So it's a slightly more uneven table. And then we're going to texture as we did before with both the foam sheet and then our little piece of foil, all the mossy bottom. And of course we will be adding the paint onto that as we've done previously when we get to that stage. And then as we did before, I'm going to take some of the green clay and get some very thin pieces and twirl that round the legs and then from the legs down to the side and up. And I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So there we go, I've added all the extra little bits and pieces. Now one tip here, don't get too carried away putting things down the sides to the middle because you still want the chairs, you want the chairs to be able to fit in under the table. And the other thing I should have said was this table is particularly good for four chairs. If you wanted to have six chairs, then you might want to make it slightly longer to have two on either side and one at the top and one at the bottom. But that's all ready to go and it's all ready to bake. Now in theory, it might be absolutely fine baking like that and the legs would stay upright but because we've only got them on a single piece of wire it's quite possible as the clay gets softer that those legs just fall out or just fall one way or t'other so they could fall outwards or they could fall inwards so here is a tip and a trick and a way to keep those legs in place you don't want it too high i'm just going to chop through that piece I'm going to fold one piece down and when I get to the outside of where the table would be I'm going to fold and because every table is going to be slightly different do this for each table make sure you've got the flat piece I have on the bottom it doesn't need to be right up next to it but it needs to be pretty close and as I thought it's not quite enough to do in one and that will need to have a little bit of a, a bend on it. So that will join in. So what I will do is I'm going to chop that slightly longer so that it goes around there and then it'll go around there. So that will all join up when I put the pieces on like that. So the first thing to do is to get those taped in place. I just ordinary Clear sticky tape will work well for this. Masking tape has a tendency to um, pull off and dislodge when it's baking. I've taped it together and then for the last part just tape it right round. And actually I've got the little tape there stuck to the um, tile and that is fine. And then I've cut myself four little pieces of card and then Cut part way through but not completely through. Put down where you think it's going to be and then cut where the other piece should go down. If you've got a piece with sellotape, put that cut side down on that one first. Pull that one over that side and that should hold your leg in position whilst you bake. And just repeat for the other three legs. Once your pieces are all ready, then as before, just tent the whole thing in aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. And that should keep your legs nice and in place whilst your table bakes. Having finished baking and cooled, I removed all the card carefully around the outside and whilst it was still stuck onto the towel, used that as an opportunity to put all the paint down to give us that sort of effect on the bottom. And then I will literally carefully run the blade underneath and lift it off obviously if you're worried about getting your towel dirty then you could have picked it up first and done it in your hands instead this gives us the first chance to put the table down and to check that the legs are all there and actual fact mine are which is good if you found that one was shorter you could simply add a little bit of extra clay on top pop it back on the towel and rebake it um, and make sure that all the legs are fine. I've put the rest of my green clay back through the pasta machine on setting number four. Just on the tabletop, a little bit of the liquid clay just to help it bond. And as before, if you didn't have any liquid clay, then you could do PVA glue for this, but obviously liquid clay is better. Put that on top and I've made sure that my sheet was the right size. 
if you have less green clay left then just do it on a thinner setting on the pasta machine but if I press down I can just with my craft knife run around the outside to get the right size clay for the tabletop just peel that off and I'll just spend a little bit of time just pressing that in round the edges so it's less obvious that it's a cut piece if you've got any air bubbles just pop them with your craft knife so I've already cut and textured four of the fairy leaf slices and I'm just going to lay them just gently for now not actually pressing down on the middle of the table and going off the side so I can see roughly where we are so that's pretty good so I haven't actually got an awful lot of space left in between I'm just going to very gently with my cocktail stick just mark where it is left pick those up put them back down there and then I can see where I need to just texture first with the foam and then with our little bit of foil and those they're so small those pieces particularly as we're going to be adding flowers in that I don't I'm not even going to bother putting any extra colors on I could if I wanted to and if I wanted to add some extra colours at this stage add a little bit of the paint or as I mentioned before some chalks just to give it a little bit of extra something but we're not going to need too much so I'm just going to texture around the edge where those bits didn't fit over and then just add the decoration so I'm going to do the four leaves going on top and then I've already cut myself several slices of the petal and then we're just going to add those on and add the decoration. So I finished the table with a full flower in the middle, four sets of sort of three petals around the outside and a full flower on every bit there and I've added just three little bits around each table leg just to add those in to the added little bits the same way as we did with the chairs. So if I lay this that way down then obviously all of this might flatten out and you might get shiny bits where it sits next to the tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of crumpled old foil on first. And then I can set that down and I should still with any luck be able to use the same support obviously watch any of the little blue additive bits you've put in and then add all my four pieces down the sides again to hold that in place whilst we bake so that's already for its final baking and as before as always tent in aluminium foil so it's not touching the clay and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using and once it's baked, we can put the whole set together and we'll have our little fairy furniture using the fairy leaf cane. And there we go. There's the little set complete with the chairs and the table. And the chairs should fit nice and neatly underneath the table. So you can have a little dining set of the four. So that's it. That's the tutorial for the fairy furniture using the fairy leaf cane. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you have fun and make some of your own. I've got a feeling I need to make myself a new fairy house to go along with all of these. So maybe I'll be doing that one soon. Thanks so much for watching and as always a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. As I say, have fun making some of your own and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.